say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Thank you all for joining us for Azusa Pacific University Spring 2021 Military Connected Graduation Ceremony. I am Everett Brooks, Executive Director of Military and Veteran Services. Let me tell you about a group of distinguished people who have persevered through a pandemic that shook the world, rigorous coursework that challenged and tested them, and life-changing events that questioned our very own democracy. This group of people, I can proudly say, like our grandparents and parents used to say, that they have walked a mile in the snow to go to school each day. I have a story to tell, and it's very powerful. The Azusa Pacific University 2021 Military Connected students have accomplished just that. I would like to share a motivational quote with you from Mother Teresa, a Catholic nun and missionary. Reach high, for stars lie hidden in your soul. Dream deep, for every dream precedes the goal. My words of advice to the graduates are to set high expectations. Setting high expectation means establishing a clear path forward. Think about times that stress you outside of your comfort zone or times that you have had to choose not to settle for less than the best. Veterans who have served our country understand the mark of 100%. Spouses and dependents have seen the sacrifice and dedication it takes to be a service member and have incorporated those same attributes into their daily lives. The ROTC cadets who are commissioning into the Army have been taught and understand the importance of setting high expectations. Create a call to action. On the challenge coin you all receive, there is a call for each of us to choose the right path and lead the way. There is a call to action for us as Christians to be difference makers in the world and lead the way so that others can follow us as we follow Christ. I'd like to thank everyone and congratulations to the class of 2021 on your achievement. Now I want to welcome our next speaker, Dr. Keith Hall, followed by Chaplain Mo Morales with the invocation, and our guest speaker, retired United States Army Command Sergeant Major Darlene Taylor, who served for over 30 years in the United States Army. Before I turn it over to Dr. Hall, I would like to acknowledge our Fall 2020 and Spring 2021 Amundsen Scholarship Award winners. Azusa Pacific University's Amundsen Foundation Veterans Scholarship provides support to students eligible for the post 9-11 GI Bill. Eligible students may be pursuing an undergraduate or graduate degree and must demonstrate financial need. 
based upon the applicant's FAFSA information, written essay, and recommendation by the scholarship committee, APU awards scholarships of up to $2,000 for spring, summer, and fall semesters. I am honored to present the fall 2020 and the spring 2021 Amundsen Scholarship winners. Greetings to our military connected and veteran graduates. My name is Keith Hall. I serve as Vice President, Chief Diversity Officer here at APU. And on behalf of President's Cabinet, our faculty and staff, and definitely members of our diversity, equity, and inclusion team, we congratulate you. Uh, you are due to be commended. You made it after the sleepless nights, after drafting and submitting all of those papers, after completing countless quizzes and tests and participating in group projects, after the oral presentations, after all the reading, <laughs> you made it. And you are now an APU graduate. And uh, we thank you. We thank you for choosing APU, deciding to come to expand your knowledge base, to be intellectually stimulated, to to be socially engaged, and to extend your journey of service through our institution. And uh, we want you to know, uh, as you step from the space of being a student to alum, that you are always a member of the APU community. And so we thank you. It's, it's our prayer that over the course of your academic journey, that you've experienced the love of Christ that you've developed a deep appreciation for scholarship and for content that, that you've gleaned from within your, within your major. It's our prayer that you've experienced community and you've cultivated meaningful relationships with faculty, with staff, with mentors, with peers. And ultimately, we hope that you've landed on this newfound purpose that undergirds your commitment to service. So again, we congratulate you for all of your hard work, for your ability to adapt, for your resilience. All of those values that you had even before you stepped onto the APU campus and the way that you amplified those values through this process, we, we commend you for that. And before I conclude, I, I just wanna also express and acknowledge um, and extend appreciation to your family. Uh, we understand for many of you, this has not been a journey that you've been on by yourself, but you've had a spouse that's been on this journey with you who had to sacrifice. So you had children and other family members and people who are a part of your network who walk with you through this process. And that's, that's not easy, but, and, and I, I'm sure you know you wouldn't have been able to, to be able to make it every step of the way without their support. And so we, we also extend uh, our appreciation to those who are a part of your network. So again, on behalf of our community, on behalf of Mr. Brooks, the Office of Military and Veteran Services, and our broader commu community, we thank you, we congratulate you, and we wish you the best as God calls you to the place to continue your service. Blessings to you. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Chaplain Mo Morales with the invocation. Following the invocation will be retired United States Army Command Sergeant Major Darlene Taylor. Well, congratulations graduates on your graduation day. My name is Chaplain Morales and it is my honor to be giving you a blessing today. So would you pray with me? Lord, I pray for each of these men and women God, they are at another milestone in their careers. Lord, as they graduate today, would you give them everything that they need to succeed in life in their next part of their journey in life? Lord, as each of these men and women, my brothers and sisters in arms, have served their country faithfully, Lord, would you give them an extra measure of grace today? I pray also for their families who have given so much for them to get to this place. 
Lord, and whatever the future brings, I pray that you would be with them, that you would keep them strong, that you would give them rest when they need it. Lord, that you would make them uh, successful in everything that they do. So, Lord, uh, today we just thank you for this blessing. We thank you for being a part of the Azusa Pacific University family. Lord, and as members of your family, God, we want to glorify you in everything that we do. So, God, I pray again for these men and women today as they celebrate their accomplishments. Lord, would they not forget today's like this? Lord, would they not forget to celebrate and celebrate in you and with you? I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, hey, congratulations. It's uh, my honor to be here with you today, and I uh, wish you only the best in the future. God bless you. Congratulations, graduates. I'm Command Sergeant Major Retired Darlene Taylor, and I'd like to take this moment to congratulate you on your momentous accomplishment. I know it wasn't easy to stay focused, especially this past year but you've overcome all obstacles and it's paid off. And as you close this chapter, take some time to celebrate your achievement and acknowledge that you are beginning your professional journey. Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Now, who am I to argue with Mandela? However, I would add to that and I would say that it is not the education that you have that changes the world. It's what you do with the education. So a building blocks of theory and the rigors of practice is what makes the difference. I began my professional career 34 years ago. The work environment was different than it is today. So I can't really speak to you about what you'll encounter as you go out on your unique path because every path is different. However, as someone who has led thousands of people over three decades, I can tell you what your future supervisor's expectations are. And you may say, well, do you really know? Yes, I do, because they have not changed. Leadership still wants the same thing. And it isn't everything that you've learned in school that's most important in the workplace. The most important thing that leaders want from their people in the workplace is for them to have emotional empathy and be able to work well with others to solve organizational problems. So first thing I want to tell you is support your peers by treating them with dignity and respect and being a team player. None of us is an island. And if we don't work well with others, they won't help us when we're in need. And I will tell you, there will come a time when you will be in need. So the key is always resolve your disagreements with them as quickly and respectfully and directly and tactfully as possible. And then always remember that you're not competing with them. You're com competing against your best self. That's where the competition lies in. Are you better than the person that you were yesterday? Now, when we're talking about supporting your leadership directly, what they really want is you to solve problems, as many of them as possible, before they get to his or her desk. I heard a leader say the other day that they hired someone to land planes. And I thought, oh, that's an interesting way to put it. But it got me to thinking about all the planes that are flying around a leader's head, around a supervisor's head. There's a priority for a budget. There's emails. There's so many things. There's meetings they have to go through. There's all these requirements, reports that have to be done. And if you can help them just land a few of those planes, you make yourself an invaluable asset. They also want you to keep them informed about what's going on in your areas of responsibility too. So it's an even balance. You have to know when to ask for assistance and when to seek clarity and when you should handle it. When it comes to 
your workplace, they want you to exceed customers' expectations. They want you to look for innovative ways to solve problems. I used to call it E-squared, bringing expertise and excellence to every encounter. And if you don't know the answer to questions, that's okay. No one expects you to know everything, but what they really want you to do is do a warm handoff to someone who can help. Knowing your tools and the tools in your workplace make that possible. So every career field is different. Every company is different. Every client is different. So that means that when you go into your first place of business, be a cultural anthropologist. Learn as much about the culture as you possibly can. And that will help you learn and grow. Don't forget to make the company's priorities your priorities. And one thing that I used to always say is be in the right place at the right time in the right mindset. That's critical. And then always improving your foxhole daily, making the organization better than the place that you found it to be. And the last thing that leaders really want, but it's not the least thing, it's the most important, is that you support yourself. Challenge yourself to continuously grow both professionally and personally. Remember that success is not a destination, it's a journey. And each time you achieve a goal, set another one, just set the bar a little bit higher. Now, along the way, you've always got to remember what Waldo Emerson's advice was, live in the sunshine, swim in the sea, and drink the wild air. This year, what we've learned, one of the most important things is our social wellness. We figured it out. We realized that we need a healthy balance of professional and personal lives. So I would encourage each one of you, before you leave the university today, say, say farewell to your friends, but make sure you have a way to stay connected with them. And as you go out into your workforce, make friends where you go so that you have those little breaks and times where you can laugh know their children, and enjoy life. So this is your time, and I wish each of you the absolute best in your career. Apply a heavy dose of practical application to the theory that you've learned, and remember, you can change the world. Thank you. Blason Filet Tyon, Doctor of Education in Higher Education Leadership, Reintegrating veterans and military-connected students through intrusive advising. Leela Angel Aguirre. Charles H. Bennett III. Leanne Clemente. Elora D. Clothier. Lina Fung Espinoza. Kalia Hannah Bashir. Sarah Suzanne Bustos Good. Catherine Hatzfeld. Marcus A. Henry. Melvin Lewis Holland Jr. Barani J. Jesse. Jeremiah E. Jones. Jason Lamb. Rio James Martinez. Brian Todd Morris. Edder Osil Palma. Malia L. Poole. Rashana Reed. Mark L. Simmons. Diamond Askins. Vincent Philip Tan. Joshua Thomas. Katie Ruth Titsworth. Timothy Michael Trudeau. 
Athena Elise Barber. Zarek Bell. Teresa M. Bowers. Mackenzie R. Brown. Jamie M. Buchanan, summa cum laude. David J. Castro. Sungay Grace Cho. Juan Emmanuel Arce Comeda. Elliot Julian Cox. Karina Gonzalez Quadra. Morgan Dunn, cum laude. Elizabeth Ann Fitzgerald, cum laude. Alfred Ford Jr. David Gonzalez. Joshua Guzman. Chase James Hall. Marlon A. Hernandez. Logan R. Hess. Zachary Joseph Ibarra. Franklin Shimada Cardos. Allison Jin Kyung Kim. Michael Peter Clementich. Rachel Lee Newbold, cum laude. Aurora McKeehan Vilches. Renee Alicia McKinney, cum laude. Patrick Ken Owen. William Kyle Patterson, cum laude. Cameron Jacob Pavlos. Noah C. Perry. Lester Francisco Quinones. Gent Joseph Range. Elijah Rapayo. Jessica Rose Saka. Alicia A. Salas. Erica Sanchez, magna cum laude. Caleb M. Shaw. Gabriella K. Smith, summa cum laude. Amber Summerlin. Nicholas Eric Vargas, cum laude. Felicia Andrea Warren, cum laude. Zachary Ryan Weber. Zachary A. Weber. Ren D. White. Chase James Hall. From the Office of Military and Veterans Service, I'd just like to say thank you for your perseverance for the past year, and God bless you with positive energy and light in the upcoming year.